What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 22 of our Liverpool FC playthrough here in Football Manager 2016. Hopefully you guys are good. Today we've got a live commentary against Real Madrid in the Champions League. It's going to be a massive game. Just a few results to tell you guys about since the last episode against Tottenham which if you missed definitely go check it out. As you can see three games played, pretty disappointing. We started things off with a 1-1 draw against bottom of the league, Brentford. It was a game we dominated, but we lacked that killer edge. And in the end, a penalty was what got us our only goal of the game. We dominated possession, we dominated the shot. On another day, we probably would have had five or six. There were a lot of clear-cut chances that simply weren't taken. And it was just a bad day at the office for our strikers. Anyway, the next result was a 4-1 win in the second round of the FA Cup. Oh, sorry, second leg of the fourth round of the FA Cup. You know, we, we had to take it to a replay. As you can see here, Lacazette grabbing a hat-trick. We dominated Leicester this game. I did not rotate my side like I had done previously, and we were, were rewarded with a convincing win as a result. The last result of this run of fixtures, perhaps the most disappointing result, I think, while I've been in charge of Liverpool. We lost 4-0, yes, 4, against uh, Man City. If we look at the player ratings here, you can see our players just weren't weren't at the office, particularly in the final third. Joe Allen had a nightmare at defensive mid. Um, it was it, it was a, a hard game to watch because I didn't feel like we were necessarily completely outplayed off the park. I mean, you can see here, um, Joe Hart had to make six saves. I love these new saves, uh, these these new screens. Sorry for these stats. It's it's so nice just to be able to see what all the different players did. Emre Chan. Did a lot of work for Man City, which was a little bit disappointing to see him doing so well, you know, our former player. Um, but it was just one of those games where I feel like we were quite unfortunate. I mean, you look at um, kind of where we had shots from. Is it not going to show? It's not. The game's still in beta, of course, still. So we'll leave that for now. But um, yeah, it was one of those games where we just didn't have enough shots. And as a result, we kind of, well, we, we lost 4-0. There's not a lot more to it other than that. It's not rocket science. If you don't score and you have a lot of shots against you, the chances are you're going to lose by a little bit of a margin. We did have clear-cut chances in that game, so it was a little bit disappointed, I guess, on that front. Anyway, looking at our team here, going into today's game, we only have six players on the bench to take on Real Madrid. We have a lot of injuries that have kind of crept up on us in recent weeks and months. Looking at it here, you can see... Uh, it's maybe a little bit deceptive because, of course, Mbolo, who's injured, who's out for five to eight days, and also Vlasic, who's out for four to five weeks. They're both out on loan, but we do have first-team players missing because Sacco is going to be suspended for this game. We also have Danny Ings, who's injured for nine days to two weeks. Nathaniel Klein is out with a twisted ankle. Probably going to be a long-term injury, that one, or at least a month. So that makes me very, very relieved that we brought in Peruzzi from PSG in January because I needed that long-term replacement at right back for if an injury did come up. And so he's going to prove a valuable investment there. Um... Other injuries, Benteke out for, as you can see, 9 to 12 days uh, with a twisted ankle. And Daniel Sturridge out with a st strained stomach muscle for 2 to 5 days. So fortunately, not long-term injuries, but it's just a bit of an inconvenience. And stacked on top of the fact this is, of course, a European game where we can't have so many players registered. It leaves us with a pretty bare-bones squad, particularly at the back. So looking at our starting eleven for this game at home against Real Madrid, as you can see, Moreno and Zuma and Mignolet all start, but Bazor is actually going to have to play centre-back for us. He can play centre-back. I see him a lot more as a centre-mid. I've not brought him in with the intention of playing him as a kind of defensive player because I just don't think he's solid enough at the back for that. However, for this game, he's going to have to play there. Obviously, we have Sacco out uh, suspended. Normally, Mamanama could come in and fill in this role, but he's coming back from an injury. As you can see, 82% overall physical condition. It's just not worth it. I'd rather play Bazaar in that situation. Looking slightly higher up the pitch, we have a pretty strong team in the midfield. Coutinho, Henderson, Alan Witzel, debatably our strongest kind of, I guess, midfield quartet, so I'm pretty happy to have them back. Uh, in the final third, we have to go with Firmino at complete forward, with Benteke's injury, with Ings's injury, with Sturridge's injury. Um... It just means that Firmino is one of our few strikers we have left. He can play complete forward, so I'm not too worried about that. It would be better to have one of our kind of more natural strikers, I guess. But he can do a job for us there. And it means that Lacazette will be moving slightly up the pitch into a poacher role for us. Which is a role he can definitely fulfil. Has the attributes to do that. And I'm hoping he might be able to grab us a goal or two today. So we'll see how we get on. I don't really have too many expectations going into this Champions League game. Uh, our board expectations for the season were to reach this stage in the competition. Given our other fixtures, in some ways, 
if we want to push on for the title, which is still really my aspiration despite the Man City result, um, it's going to be vital that... Um, well, it wouldn't be vital, but it'd be useful in some ways that we get knocked out of this competition so we can really focus on the league. Because if you look at the league here, we have that game in hand on Spurs, but we're three points behind them. So we need to win that game in hand to go joint top. But our goal difference, because that Man City game really took a hammering, which is a real shame. But anyway, let's have a look quickly at the other games going on here. So you can see Spurs won their first leg 5-0. Arsenal doing well. Man City still in the competition too. So a lot of English teams in there. Which is pretty pleasing to see. And Celtic making it through, of course, from our group. So we'll see how we get on today. Going to be a really tricky game. I'm under no illusions about that. Um, we have a good slide, though. Missing a few of our strikers, which I'm hoping won't impact us too much. Looking at it here, Real Madrid the favourites. They just have a better quality. You can see we're missing Sturridge, Benteke, Sacco. There's also Klein missing, who really has been one of our best players. Um, kind of in our side this year, and he's going to be a massive miss. Looking at how they're going to line up, you can see pretty standard shape. Carvajal, Marcelo, Ramos, Varane, uh, Kilo Navas in goal. That's not too different. Volland seems to be the only new player that they've kind of brought into the team. Um, can't see any new players on the bench either. Or Sakiri actually signed from Stoke. So he's that only kind of new name that I'm noticing at least. If I've missed someone, I apologise. Oh, they have Zid is that Zidane's kid in goal? It must be. Luca Zidane. Let's check. Yeah, Zidane's son. And then there's also Enzo, isn't there? He's still playing for Castilla. Well, one of the Zidane brothers is in goal for them on the bench. Maybe if Kilo Navas gets injured, he'll get a debut. Can't see that happening. Anyway, <laughs> let's get into the game. As I said, I don't I don't want to say I don't want to win this game. Like, I'd, I'd love to go on a run in the Champions League. I'd love to get as far as we can in this competition. But at the same time... Um, Getting drawn against Real Madrid in the first knockout round, like you have to, I think you have to lower your expectations that little bit. You can't really expect to beat them. They have some amazing quality players that we simply we do not have at the moment because we're still a fairly young side that's going to hopefully develop into a really strong side over the coming years. But we'll give it a go. We're at home for the first leg, which I kind of see as a bit of an advantage, just because. Um, obviously, if we win at home, then I'll go really go for it away. But say we were to lose two or three goals at home, chances are I'd just rotate the team quite heavily for the away leg and kind of settle for the fact it's probably not going to happen. But we do have a chance there. Firmino, with the run, cut it inside, but smashes it wide. Unfortunate there, really. Needs to hit the target. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's Real Madrid at the end of the day. We can't have too higher expectations. At the end of the day, it's kind of our own fault that we're playing against Real Madrid in the first knockout round because, of course... In the group stage, we 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 fucked up. To put to put it blunt, bluntly, um, we got one point from our first three games. Unfortunately, we did win our remaining three games, which saw us finish second. But um, you know, after those first three games, we couldn't really expect to do uh, much better than just trying to scrape into the knockout round, which is what we've done. And as a result of finishing second, of course, we knew we were going to get drawn against a number one seed team, and that's kind of the hand we've been dealt. We're on the attack here, though. Lacazette takes it around. Kilo Navas cannot stop it. Alexander Lacazette, 22nd goal of the season for him. Great start for us here. We get first blood in this game. Of course, away goals are a factor, so a clean sheet would be absolutely delightful today. But we are with out Sacco or Klein, of course, Peruzzi and also Bazaar coming into the centre-back position. So we've got to kind of bear that in mind. But that's a nice goal. Lacazette, keeper, should probably do better. But at the same time, I'm not going to complain one little bit. Witzel with the assist. And, um, yeah, it, it's been a good opening to this game, really. We're not being dominated, which is a really important factor, I think, that's worth considering. Um, and we're, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. We've just got to kind of focus on a game. 1-0, I'd certainly take, but there's a long time left in this game. Real Madrid have real quality in the likes of Benzema or Benzema and uh, also, of course, Ronaldo. So we've got to bear that in mind. But that's a good first half. I'm going to tell the players I'm happy. Obviously, we're not expected to win this game. We are very much the underdogs in this tie. It's going to be tough, of course. We are playing against former Liverpool FC legend Rafa Benitez, who is managing Real Madrid, of course, in real life. And I did check before this game, and he's still at them in kind of real uh, in this save. So, yeah, it'd be nice to get one over on him. Uh, but we're doing okay at the moment. One 0 up, of course. Uh, Real Madrid not shown too much killer edge, although looking at the stats, they have had a few shots. They've just probably been quite speculative. I can only assume. But 60 minutes in, maybe got the option to mix things on uh, and around off the bench. However, due to our limited bench 
kind of only having six players because of all the injuries we've had. There isn't masses I can do to kind of completely change how we're playing. Unfortunately, Kurt Zuma not looking too great on the condition front and is already booked. But I don't have an offender except Mamanama who can come on. Um, and I don't really like changing my centre-backs either um, during the game. I'm going to take off Joe Allen. He's not had a standout game. We're going to bring on Tarago Maher, I think. And I'm also going to take off Firmino and bring on Gabriel Barbosa. So two young Brazilians coming on for us. Both former Santos players, of course. Um, a lot of Santos players end up in Liga BBVA. I'm hoping that these two won't. I'm hoping we can keep them for the long foreseeable future. But we'll stick them in here. And hope that they can see out this game for us. As there's not been many highlights, but I'm not going to complain about that one little bit. I will happily take 1-0 in this first leg. Because it would put us in quite a nice situation where one away goal would really kind of put us in, a, um, I guess, a, a very good position. Kurt Zoom is now injured. I'm going to bring on Mamana uh, for the last two minutes. I'm hoping that's not a long-term injury for Zuma because we have got the Capital One Cup final coming up. We have got the second leg of this game, of course, and a chance here. Tony Cruz, was Ronaldo offside? He was offside. No chance. Sit down, Cristiano. We stay at 1-0. My heart sunk just a little bit then as that happened, but um, Mamana is on the pitch now. I don't know why it's still telling me that. Let's tell, say we'll keep Zuma on, even though Mamana is already replacing him. But there's a chance here. Mamana, the sub, he's got to get into this game quickly, and Ronaldo playing in a striker position now. Peruzzi... Could not stop that. And Benzema with a late away goal here. His 14th of the season. And, well, I, I kind of outlined, I guess, Ronaldo and Benzema as players who we needed to keep quiet and that we had to be wary of. And, well, one of them's got the goal and one of them's got the assist. It's like I knew. Um, that's pretty disappointing. Ronaldo here running down the right-hand side. Ball gets switched over and Peruzzi just out of position a little bit. Gets caught narrow. Loses his man. It's a fairly easy finish for Benzema in the end. And um, yeah, that's a, that's a cruel blow late on. However, 1-1 is certainly not a bad result in this, the first leg. As I said, I don't want to say I have no aspirations and have no hope of winning this. But at the same time, it's, I don't know, it feels like this game for is going to be a bit of a test for us. But it's not a game that I kind of think is going to define our season. I did not have us down as winning a Champions League in our second season. So that doesn't concern me at all. But yeah, 1-1 one, one after the first leg. Could have been better, could have been worse. I believe the next leg isn't for a little while. The further you get into the Champions League, the more frequent the games end up being. You can see here, it's going to be on the 8th of March. That's a little way away. We have also got the Capital One Cup game against Everton at Wembley. That will be next episode, so hopefully I'll see you guys for that competition. Um, but yeah, that's going to wrap up things for this video. Hopefully you did enjoy, guys. If you did, please do smash the like button. And uh, yeah, that wraps things up for me. So uh, I will talk to you guys in a bit, I guess.